This morning I am reading from Matthew 2, 1 through 12, New Revised Standard Version. In the time of Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born to the king of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thank you. 
am reading Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12 in the New Revised Standard Version. Um, This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mysteries of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is in the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich varieties might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. May God bless the reading, hearing, an understanding of these words this morning. Today we are going to celebrate Epiphany. Now, just to let you know, today is not Epiphany. Epiphany was Friday. Actually, Epiphany is 12 days after Christmas. This Epiphany is the end of the birth narrative of Jesus. The culmination of everything that has come through the season of Advent. But this is not the end of the story of Jesus. The season of Epiphany starts today and will take us to Transfiguration Sunday, which will occur eight weeks from today. Epiphany is a season in which we hear story after story of the presence and power of God revealed to us through the person of Jesus. Epiphany is where we come to understand the thoughts, the actions, the wants, the desires, the compassion, and the understanding that is in the mind and the day-to-day life of Jesus. This is where we get to know, know a man who can teach us, show us, guide us, on how we are to live our lives in this world. This is the next eight weeks. But we have today, this morning, Epiphany. And we all know this story. The wise men, or the magi, or the magicians, or the astronomers, whatever you want to call them. And let me tell you, Theologians and scholars are still arguing today as to what to call them. So whatever it is you want to call them, (coughs) they were traveling. They were traveling following a star in the sky going towards what they did not really know. But they were traveling. Now, to understand fully, these were not men of the Jewish faith. These were not people who understood the Hebrew Scriptures. They had read them. They kind of knew what was going on. But they weren't fully enveloped 
into the thoughts, the theology, and the traditions of those scriptures. But they traveled because they had some knowledge. And so to fully understand what it is that they read and what the signs that they were seeing, they stopped and they went to see King Herod to see if he could help them. So he pointed them, he pointed them in the right direction. And then it be, he became very paranoid. But what it took, it took these magi, these people from another tradition, another area, another town, another way of thinking, to see the signs, to interpret those signs, and to go to Herod, to show Herod the signs, to talk to Herod's scribes, religious leaders, and point out to them that which they had missed. The so-called experts on Jewish faith missed the signs, missed the understandings, and it took someone from another tradition to see them and to understand them. So the Magi were pointed on the right direction, and they traveled. They walked their way until the stars stopped, and they saw. They saw the babe with his mother, and they knelt down and paid homage to the child. The arrival of the Magi at the crib of Jesus, the, hon the homage that they paid to him, signified and can be seen as fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus Christ being the one sent by God. Being sent not just for the Jewish people, but for all people of all traditions. The Jewish Messiah at that moment was made visible to the strangers from the east. And actually, if we understand the Greek word epiphania, which epiphany comes from, if you translate that word, it means to make visible. So it was here, as they knelt down and paid homage, even before gifts were given, that the Jewish Messiah was made visible to the Magi, as well as Jesus, recognizing these strangers. These Gentiles, seeing them and knowing that they too were children of God. For it was at this time that the plan for Jesus became known, made visible. Not just to the Christ child, the plan was there, but as well to those who were different. Because this baby, this child will grow up and save all in the world. Because if Jesus was in the beginning with God, as we are told in John, for we read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And life was the light of all people. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory full of grace and truth. That being true, those words in John being Scripture means for us that Jesus at the beginning has an understanding of the plan of God, the plan for all of creation. And it was in this story, this epiphany, that we ourselves come to realize through the babe, through the wise magi being seen and understood the plan for creation. We see it in the child. 
We see it in the strangers that come to see the child. To continually love, to accept all of creation as beings who are given the grace and the love of God. This, this is what Epiphany is. This is what is made visible to us on this day. This is the reason the Magi traveled. Traveled so far to see this child because this is what they wanted to understand. This is why the Christ child saw the Magi. This is what the Christ child saw in the Magi. Because the child wanted to know who God's grace was for. He had seen his parents. He knows the Jewish tradition. He's going to be raised in the Jewish tradition. But these were different from his parents. These were strangers. Different in the way they looked. Different in the way they acted. Different in the way they thought. But it was the child. God in flesh for us. Who now understood his purpose in life. Our epiphany this morning is just that. Understanding. Knowing that we are given the gift of God's grace to show to the world what it means to live by this gift of grace. To live by the mercy of God and to live by the love shown to us not only by God, but by this child born for us. The season of Epiphany is our call. It is our commissioning that we just like Paul, have been given the grace, the gift of grace to make known everything about Christ. Not just the death and the resurrection, but all of the life and the deeds of Jesus. We are being called this morning to go out into the world to tell the entire story of Jesus. All of the boundless riches that he has for us. His forgiveness, his healing, his compassion, his acceptance, his love. That is who Jesus is. That is who Jesus was in our scriptures. That is who Jesus will be 10,000 years from now. And that is what we are to do. To follow in the footsteps of Christ. To follow on that path that he started on, continuing his life, his love, his deeds for those near to us or for those we have to travel so far to see. Our lives are used to promote the epiphany that we see this day and to promote the epiphany that continues to be seen and realized each day of our lives. The idea that God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and by proxy, all of us accept the people of the world and show the people of the world love. This is the revealed truth which Christ is the source and the substance. This is what Paul came to realize and makes known to us in verse 6. The Gentiles have become heirs, members of the same body, sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Jews and Gentiles, all are members of the same body, body, fellow partakers in the same promise. This is a message of unity in Christ. No matter race, gender, living situation, thinking we are all in this together, bound by the love of God. How can any believer who hears this message, who feels this epiphany, still want to separate, still want to put up partitions or block connections between people of the world 
when God's plan, God's goal, the goal of Christ is to bring all the world together through Christ as children of God. We were not put on this world to separate ourselves from others. We were put on this world to bring the message of unity, of tolerance, love, acceptance. That was taught to us throughout the life of Christ. Shown to us through the words of the Bible. As it is, Paul ended up in prison. He ended up in prison for his beliefs, for his teachings, for his travels, for everything that he did in his life following the steps of Christ. He ended up in prison. The road is not going to be easy. If we follow the road set by Christ, set by Paul, we too are going to stumble to fall, to have troubles, to have problems, to have people yell, scream, be angry. But this is the road we must travel. This is the path that has been laid out for us, and not just for us, not just for the world, not just for the United Church. But this is the path that has been laid out for us, for God, for Christ, for the Holy Spirit, because this was the plan from the beginning. Amen.